Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Uh, first, uh, it's a high surf advisory out here for the uh, Arctic coast from Point Barrow on down the coastline there. Uh, that's due to uh, the storm that's passing by just to the north. Uh, kicking winds up uh, as high as 50 miles an hour at the airport in Barrow today, uh, currently, and uh, that's uh, created seas as high as seven feet, and those are uh, crash banging onto shore and could cause some uh, minor beach erosion uh, until about, uh, let's see, when's this end? I think it, until midnight tonight, and then the, that's when the, surf, the advisory's due to end as the storm pulls off a little bit and weakens, winds come down, so will the seas eventually. Anyway, that's the area right up there, and again, along that stretch of the coastline that highlighted in the graphic. Otherwise, that's, that's what the uh, Bering Sea, or the uh, <laughs> Arctic storm, the Bering Sea storm has uh, kicked in to, uh, has put the St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait coast, uh, in toward uh, actually the entire Northwest coast here. That's uh, actually kicking in Tomorrow, Friday, for these areas, high surf advisory for the same conditions, possible minor beach erosion, gusty south winds, long fetch, uh, building the waves up, and the exception being the Yukon Delta coast up in the eastern Norton Sound and the south coast of the Seward Peninsula. That's a coastal flood watch, which is out uh, for tomorrow, tomorrow night, and possibly into Saturday uh, for uh, coastal flooding, possible coastal flooding in those areas, not just... Uh, high surf and possible beach erosion. We actually could have some flooding occurring there. It's a possibility. It's just a watch and not a warning, not a warning yet. Anyway, moving on to satellite or fire danger here. Back to some extreme areas here along the uh, upper Yukon River and the Yukon Flats back to the north a little bit. And that due solely to uh, increase in the winds there. Fort Yukon seeing gusts 30 to 35 miles an hour today as well as areas up into the uh, Eastern Brooks Range there. Uh, so that's why it jumped up into the extreme danger zone there. Temperatures are in the mid 60s up in this area there. So uh, that and the continued lack of moisture is uh, at least for today. That should improve here tonight when the winds begin to come down and uh, for tomorrow as well. Otherwise, we still have a lingering area of high to very high fire danger in the Susitna Valley. Uh, and that uh, will probably hang on for another day or so. Looking at satellite imagery, here's that uh, Arctic storm sliding eastward there just off the north coast, and that brought those strong winds <coughs> to the central coast uh, currently there. And even the east side seeing gusts 40 to 45 miles per hour this afternoon along the coastline, and then winds coming down to 25 to 30 miles an hour this afternoon here along the western coast, but again, that wind condition affecting areas uh, even south of the Brooks Range there in the upper Yukon Valley, as I just mentioned. Otherwise, uh, the front right through here brought a fair amount of precipitation into the uh, interior areas today. Not so much on the north slope. I saw about one to, ten, one to two tenths of an inch in some areas uh, up there in the last 12 hours, but uh, in the uh, Nanana area, they picked up two-thirds of an inch of precipitation in the last 12 hours at Nanana, and McKinley Park had about the same amount. And then up northeast of Fairbanks, Little China Ridge had half an inch of rain, as did Nikolai, also half an inch of rain today. And that's uh, pulling off to the east here with the uh, rainfall beginning to lighten up. They car were carrying heavy rain earlier at uh, Nanana at the airport there. Otherwise, just clouds here over southern Alaska. A few uh, showers did show up in the Susitna Valley, but pretty light. Generally just uh, clouds here down to the North Gulf Coast. Had some sunshine, eastern Copper River Basin today. At least a uh, few breaks enough to push the temperatures in the lower to mid-70s. Uh, there from uh, Chitina over toward May Creek and the Kennecott McCarthy areas. That was the warmest locations in the state today. And back out to the west, uh, big mass of moisture is pushing northeastward. Warm front right through here, that brought about two-tenths of an inch to St. Paul Island today of uh, light rain and moisture just about to make landfall on the south coast of the Seward Peninsula and eventually will push into the, uh, will definitely push into the southwest coast uh, tonight and that could be on the moderate to heavy side, especially after midnight. And you can see that uh, system, tr the front trails 
all the way down off the chart there, a couple of waves, or at least one wave developing on it. Otherwise, the southeast coast, uh, trough south of the area now, and uh, generally dry with some uh, sunshine occurring in some areas, uh, especially down to the south there, but uh, light winds and uh, variably cloudy skies there. And for the uh, satellite here, the visible, you can see definitely there was some sunshine there, Dixon entrance, the Queen Charlotte's up into the southern panhandle, uh, a little more in the way of clouds as you head north, high pressure controlling the Bering Sea, and uh, quite an area of cloudiness with that, low clouds and fog as well, but it looked like some clearing here over Kodiak Island. Here's that front in the precipitation area moving eastward and also weakening here. Uh, still brought a good slug of moisture into the, uh, as I mentioned, into the eastern interior today. It was showers scattering out back to the southwest. And uh, the rain and wind, not so heavy on the, more of a wind producer than a precipitation producer, the storm up there in the Arctic, but that's going to be moving off and weakening. Here's a warm front with this uh, Bering Sea system. We'll see tonight uh, that uh, cold front pushes eastward, the low center tracks northeastward. Warm front pulls a fair amount of precipitation, a heavy, moderate to heavy, into the Yukon Delta across Norton Sound. That'll be reaching the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula wet for St. Lawrence Island and a little bit of an increase in the winds. Gusty southwest winds here, quite a fetch from south of the Aleutians right up to the Yukon Delta coast and look for uh, clouds, showers, drizzle, fog, IFR covering all of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Probably a few breaks here over the Alaska Peninsula. Kodiak Island, light westerly flow. Look for a few uh, breaks tonight as well. No change really here, south central Alaska. Probably lose the shower threat in the Susitna Valley and stays dry over the Copper River Basin. This front just uh, goes to pieces here. And some lingering showers are along the Alaska Range and up into the maybe the 40 mile country, but drying out just to the north of that. Isolated showers in the Brooks Range. And the wind's coming down, stays windy probably all night, especially on the east side here, but they'll be generally coming down. You'll lose a 50 mile an hour wind gust, maybe the 40 mile an hour wind gust. So that high surf advisory will end. Look for a break farther along with some clearing there toward Point Hope and Cape Lisbon. And for the outlook tomorrow, that system uh, continues to track northeastward. The frontal boundary pushes uh, moderate to heavy rains into the uh, northwest or into the west here and northwest interior. The heaviest uh, could see some heavy rain begin to develop on the southern slopes of the western Brooks Range, the Long Mountains, but even away from there, moderate amounts of rain in toward Tanana, Galena, back across the Yukon Delta, and rain and uh, gusty winds along this frontal boundary down across the Perbolofs right into the Adak Atka area. And this low over the western Aleutians, uh, much weaker by comparison, just kind of hanging back and creating a few showers out in that area. Look for a partly sunny day here across the southeast coast tomorrow. Uh, temperature could push 70 or so in the uh, more sunnier areas. And that pattern along the North Gulf Coast as well. Dry south central Alaska. Best chance for sun will be the farther south you are on the peninsula. Prince William Sound should see some sun tomorrow. Dry conditions for Kodiak with that continued light westerly flow. And that could extend actually into northeast Bristol Bay, although you may have a lot of uh, thick cirrus spreading in. Otherwise, uh, not bad for the Alaska Peninsula, but the uh, precipitation pushing eastward in a good jet coming over the top of this ridge and could, well, approaches uh, Eagle, probably won't make the Eagle area until tomorrow evening. And then on Saturday, whatever does make Eagle will be just a few scattered showers on Saturday here, but uh, Southeast Interior looks to see the best weather, the driest and the sunniest, and that could extend into the southeast coast here. It looks uh, very good there with uh, just some clouds, mostly sunny skies, light winds northwest, maybe gusts up to 20 along the coast. South central Alaska, partly to mostly sunny, really uh, depends how much clouds get streaming eastward here. Uh, breaking out anywhere to see some sunshine will probably rise into the lower to mid 70s, but uh, Again, heavy amounts of rain. In fact, it looks really wet and windy over a good chunk of the uh, northern, actually the northern third of the state, as well as the western side with the heaviest precipitation occurring along the southern slopes of the Brooks Range. Uh, pretty windy, you could see gusts 40 miles an hour or so in the inland areas here, the Kobuk uh, Valley, Selawik Valley, and uh, back across the Seward Peninsula. Beginning to improve along the Yukon Delta coast in the afternoon with the rain ending as that front edges eastward and some higher pressure back here to the west, pretty weak. Really just uh, kind of an area of, uh, well, area of higher pressure between the two low centers here. This one hanging back to the south there. 
and the frontal boundary uh, stays just right over the central Aleutian, so rain, fog, and wind will continue for Adak and Atka, and also uh, lighter amounts of precipitation, but still uh, probably see some IFR times on the southern side of the Alaska Peninsula, maybe the eastern Aleutians. Lows for tonight, uh, lower 40s, lower to mid 40s on the Arctic coast, uh, lower 50s, <clears throat> Kotzebue Sound, upper 40s, lower 50s, Seward Peninsula, mid 50s here over the southwest interior, upper 40s, Copper River Basin, lower to mid 50s, south central Alaska, in the 50s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, 65 to 73, warmest down south there. Uh, probably will see some 70s, some locations there, as well as uh, maybe near 70s to sit in the valley, lower 70s again, Copper River Basin upper 40s to mid 50s there for the Arctic coast and your lows the following morning pretty mild here 55 to 60 over the west southwest interior with uh, lower to mid 50s southern Alaska and the panhandle and lower 40s uh, lower to mid 40s for the Arctic coast and upper 40s lower 50s for the Aleutians and then for the highs on Saturday uh, bringing it up a little bit here go for the upper 70s Copper River Basin uh, maybe even pushing 80 in some of the eastern areas there and the same thing here from Toke Northway could approach 80 degrees, 70 near Eagle, 70 to 75, 6 or 7, the Susitna Valley, lower 70s, Bristol Bay, 65 to 70 up over the central and northeast interior, the Arctic coast uh, pushing 60 on the east side and upper 50s west. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For Friday morning, IFR, Bering Sea Aleutians, right on up into the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, uh, up with marginal VFR at least up to the Kuskokwim Mountains, if not into the Kuskokwim Valley, northward there across the northwest interior. IFR, Arctic Coast, VFR, Brooks Range, southward in the Copper River Basin, Kenai Peninsula. Marginal VFR, right just east of Kodiak Island, otherwise VFR back across Bristol Bay. And then a lot of IFR here out over the Gulf, just kind of uh, barely grazing the North Gulf Coast, but making a little bit of a jog up near or just east of, or right into the Yakutat area, marginal for the Panhandle. And for the afternoon, mostly marginal VFR, probably be some VFR here across the southeast coast, otherwise IFR, uh, most areas of the Gulf of Alaska staying off the coast. And marginal VFR tracking eastward here, Definitely into the Kuskokwim Valley and then northward across uh, the Koyukuk Valley, IFR, western north slope Arctic coast, right on down across Yukon Delta, and mostly western northwest of the uh, Kuskokwim River there, but not much. And then down into the uh, central Aleutians, Nikolsky right on the edge, marginal VFR up over the Alaska Peninsula. Saturday morning, IFR, definitely into Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, and Dillingham northward now. IFR looks like for the Kuskokwim Valley, uh, or at least the Kuskokwim Mountains, northward there across the North Slope, holding on to VFR here at Alaska Range into uh, South Central Alaska, Kodiak Island right on the edge, and marginal VFR right along the coast here, and some cases up into Prince William Sound, and marginal for the Panhandle. Afternoon, Saturday, about the same here, no change for the Southeast Coast, Gulf or North Gulf Coast. Still, VFR here, east of the Alaska Range, and uh, Cook Inlet, Manuska, Sitna Valley, Copper River Basin, up into the upper Tanah Valley areas, and that's about it. Otherwise, the west, IFR, a uh, pretty good area of it with that southwest flow here, right on down to the southwest coast and into the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Passes tomorrow, Anatovic, VFR becoming marginal in the afternoon. Same forecast for Adigan, VFR becoming marginal. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR tomorrow. Uh, could be, there'll be clouds probably coming in in the afternoon, hopefully it'll stay above that uh, marginal threshold. And rainy though, they'll probably go, it, pretty good chance they'll go marginal VFR, especially on the western entrance in the afternoon, later in the afternoon. And for windy, VFR becoming marginal. Isabel, VFR. And Mintasta, looking pretty good too, VFR. Tomorrow, same forecast for Tanita, VFR. And for Portage, it uh, could be marginal at times throughout the day, which means it could be VFR as well at times, kind of intermixed there. Chilkoot and White, uh, same sort of thing, kind of a marginal type day, but it means uh, some, at some point in the day it'll be VFR. And for uh, freezing levels here, 4,000 feet there along the uh, Arctic coast, North Slope, and then sloping up to about 12,000 here, Southern Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island, 14,000 feet there just south of the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Alaska Peninsula, 10,000 in over the Panhandle, 
Out over the Bering Sea, lots of warm air, that uh, southwest flow, so 12,000 feet, all the way up north of St. Lawrence Island. Pretty good gradient right through here, uh, back down to 2,000 over the Russian Far East. As far as icing goes, uh, quite a swath of uh, least light to uh, isolated moderate rime here from the Aleutians, and then a big uh, slug of moisture right up into the uh, western and central interior. Slipping eastward be in there will be embedded in that area. will be considerable moderate rime icing here. Above 7,000 feet up here to the north, but down to the south with those high freezing levels will be way up there above 12,000 feet. And for the jet stream, trough out here over the Bering Sea, west-northwest flow coming out of the western Pacific, and then southwest flow between the high here south of Kodiak and that trough, pulling that moisture right up into the interior and along the western areas, 70 to 100 knot winds, then back to the northwest here for somewhat drier conditions to the east. And a 9,000 feet strong winds here across the Bering Sea from the Aleutians, 35 to 50 knots there for the Aleutians, high as 60 to 65 coming across the uh, Bering, and then uh, 45 knots over the western interior. Same fork, or pattern here, 35 to 50 knot winds from the southwest there. Uh, right up into the interior and then kind of uh, diminishing here as you get out to the Arctic coast about 15 to 20, northwest 15 for the panhandle and 10 to 15 over the southeast interior. Turbulence wise, uh, moderate chop pretty likely tomorrow here in the uh, shaded area, especially for small aircraft below 4,000 feet over the western interior and out over the Aleutians. Fish Hook and the Scorpion. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. One of our favorite summertime constellations is visible above the southern horizon after sunset this month, and it has quite a story. That's right, James. Scorpius the Scorpion is gracing our southern sky this month. But did you know that Scorpius has a totally different identity that has nothing to do with scorpions? What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for about an hour after sunset any night this week facing south. It is here that you'll be able to see the familiar J-shaped pattern of stars that make the constellation Scorpius the Scorpion. According to Greek mythology, Scorpius was sent by Gaia, the goddess of the earth, to punish Orion for boasting that he was the greatest hunter to ever live. So while he was hunting, the scorpion attacked Orion, stinging him with its poisonous stinger. The scorpion was then placed into the sky to mark Gaia's victory. That, however, is not the only story about this bright pattern of summer stars. Believe it or not, many people see this J-shaped pattern as the giant fish hook of the demigod Maui. In Polynesian folklore, Maui and his brothers decided to go fishing. He brought his magic fish hook with him and instructed his brothers that once he tossed the fish hook in the water, no matter what they caught, keep paddling and do not look back. Almost instantly, Maui's fish hook began to pull up large objects from the ocean, excited. Maui's brothers paddled faster, and Maui pulled harder and harder. Many hours passed, and the brothers were exhausted from all the rowing. Against Maui's instructions, they decided to look back at what Maui caught, and boy, were they surprised. Indeed, one of the brothers exclaimed, Maui caught land! Maui was furious, exclaiming, Had you not looked back, we could have raised a greater land. We now know these small pieces of land as the Hawaiian Islands. In addition to that, Maui tossed his fish hook into the heavens to slow down the sun so that the summer months would have more hours of daylight. To this day, we can see Maui's fish hook in the sky every summer. The stars of Maui's fish hook, aka Scorpius the Scorpion, have intriguing names. Starting from the west and working our way east, we have the three stars marking the claws of the scorpion, Graphius, Shuba, and Pi Scorpii. Down and to the left of those three stars, you have Alnayat, Antares, and Alnayat. Yes, Scorpius has two stars of the same name. The first Alnayat is Sigma Scorpii. It's a binary star system over 500 light years away. 
The second Alnayat is Tau Scorpii. It's a blue-white star over 400 light years away from us and over 18,000 times as bright as our sun. Between Sigma and Tau Scorpii lies Antares, the famed rival of Mars. Antares is so large that if you were to place it in our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars would be all orbiting inside Antares. Lastly, let's show you the tail. Moving away from Tau Scorpii, we have Epsilon Scorpii, Mu, Zeta, and Eta Scorpii, Sargus, Iota, and Kappa Scorpii, and Shaula and Lasath, which mark the stinger. Shaula and Lasath are sometimes called the cat's eyes because they seem to glow mysteriously like the eyes of a cat. Shaula is over 36,000 times the brightness of our sun and is approximately 570 light years away. Meanwhile, Lasath, which means bite of the poisonous one, is also close to 580 light years from us and over 12,000 times the brightness of our sun. So there you have it, one constellation with two inspiring pieces of folklore. As the night passes, you can watch Maui's fishhook descending toward the horizon. Or you can imagine it being a menacing scorpion desperately trying to find Orion the hunter. And if you look closely, it's being followed by a bright non-twinkling light. That light is Jupiter. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at the sea ice advisory or sea ice analysis here, uh, continuing to melt and uh, expand or retreat north and east and a little bit to the west. And this area here uh, near the Barrier Islands on the north side just about gone. And uh, the same trends expected to continue for the uh, foreseeable future. And for the coastal water forecast here. 25 knots, small craft advisory level winds for the south coast of the Panhandle tomorrow, 6 to 7 foot seas, northwest 20, with 5 foot seas on the north coast, Lynn Canal, south 15, and south, or northwest 10. Pretty light here for Stevens Passage, but kicks up to 20 knots there for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Saturday, north to northwest winds, uh, 10 knots, central, southern, inside waters, so pretty light winds even up here to the north, Lynn Canal, south at 10, 2 foot seas. 20 knot northwest winds on the south coast with seas at 6 feet and west northwest 15 with 6 foot seas on the north coast. Prince William Sound west 10 knots seas 2 feet tomorrow so staying light there but small craft advisories for the western north gulf coast. 30 knots out of the west with seas at 8 feet. Small crafts also for the barren islands with west winds at 25 knots and 6 foot seas. Then we've got southwest at 20 for uh, Kamishak Bay and sea six feet, small craft advisory south of the forelands here for Cook Inlet. <coughs> Excuse me, southwest 25 and south 15 with three foot seas for northern Cook Inlet. And for Saturday, southwest 20, northern Cook Inlet with small craft advisories south 25 here, uh, south of the forelands again, and southwest 25 for Kamishak Bay. Same thing, southwest 25 for the Barren Islands. West winds 25 for the western North Gulf Coast and east side, staying at 20 knots from the west. With seas at about six feet and a couple of light wind days coming up for Prince William Sound for Saturday, Friday and Saturday with those 10 knot winds. And Kodiak Island, southwest 25 knots, so small craft advisories there with six to seven foot seas. But uh, Sitkanak all the way down to Cape Sarachev, just looking at 15 knot winds from the south and southwest with only four foot seas. Small craft advisory zone on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, south 25 with seas at 5 feet, and southwest 20 with 4 foot seas for Bristol Bay. Moving on to the Saturday outlook here, 20 to 30 knot southerlies for the Alaska Peninsula. Could be higher gusts here on the northern bays uh, with the small craft advisories on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southwest 20 for Bristol Bay. And uh, it looks like Sit Castle Cape to Sitkanak, southwest at 20. Otherwise, small craft advisories, Kodiak Island, the strongest winds in Shilakoff Strait, southwest 30 knots and 8 foot seas. And for the uh, Fox Islands tomorrow, south winds 20 to 30 knots, strongest back uh, across Nunmak Island, 
uh, with the uh, 30 knot winds there and seas 5 to 8 feet with Adakanatka south 30 knots, 9 to 13 foot seas. That extends out to about Amchitka and then uh, west of there, Kiska to Shimia north of 20. Outlook for Saturday, northeast 15 there, west of Kiska Island to Shimia, and then light winds here across Kamchatka, or, uh, <laughs> uh, Amchitka Island here, and the central Aleutians, 25 to 30 knots, southerlies, small craft advisories there, staying under gale force though, and small craft advisories, south winds 25 to 30 knots for the eastern Aleutians. Southwest coast, gales tomorrow, south 35 knots, right up across St. Lawrence Island, including Norton Sound and St. Matthew Island, just under the threshold there in the Perbolos with south winds at 30 knots and seas anywhere from 8 to 13 feet. And uh, gales still, St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound for Saturday there. Otherwise, small craft advisories for the remainder of the Bering Sea for 25 to 30 knot winds with 10 foot seas. Eastern Beaufort Sea coast uh, still pretty brisk on the winds tomorrow. Small craft advisories here for the eastern stretch of the coastline for those west winds, 30 knots, 10 to 11 foot seas, falling back to 20 knots in the central coast. East 15 on the west side there, northeast 20, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, and then east 30 knots here over the Chuck CC. And for Saturday, northeast 30 knots, western coast, east 30 on the central coast, and uh, diminishing east winds as you head toward demarcation point, south 25 from Wales to Cape Thompson. For tonight, again, uh, Conditions improving on the Arctic coast there. Slowly as that system weakens and pulls off, next storm pulling rain and wind up into the uh, Yukon Delta, and that'll move into the northwest interior on Friday. And Saturday looks wet up north. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.